Eighth grade, unit five, lesson five. More graphs of functions. Problem number one. Match each diagram to the function described. Then label the axes appropriately. Diagram A matches function number two. The function inputs the edge length, E, of a cube and outputs the volume, V. Edge length E would be the horizontal axis or the x-axis, and volume V would be the vertical axis or the y-axis. This graph shows that as the edge length of a cube E increases, the volume of the cube V also increases. Diagram B matches function 5. The function inputs the time of day, lowercase t, and predicts the temperature capital T. The time, lowercase t, is the horizontal axis or the x-axis, and the temperature, capital T, is the vertical axis or the y-axis. This graph shows that as the time of day increases and the sun rises, the temperature increases. But as we all know, as time moves forward later in the day, the sun goes down, causing the temperature to also go down. Diagram C matches function 4. The function inputs the height of a triangle with a base 12 and outputs the area A. The horizontal axis or the x-axis is the height H and the vertical axis or the y-axis is the area A. This graph shows that as the height of the triangle increases, the area of the triangle also increases at a constant rate. Diagram D matches function G. The function inputs the time of day T and predicts the number of cars washed at a student car wash C. The horizontal axis or the x-axis represents the time of day T and the vertical axis which is the y-axis represents car wash C. This graph shows that once the students finally opened up the car wash, the number of cars washed increased at a constant rate. Diagram E matches function 3. The function inputs the distance traveled D and predicts the amount of fuel left in the tank F. The horizontal axis or the x-axis represents distance D and the vertical axis or the y-axis represents fuel. F. This graph shows that as the distance traveled increases, the amount of fuel left in the tank decreases. Diagram F matches function 1. The function inputs the age of an oak tree, A, and outputs a prediction of the height of the tree, H. The horizontal axis, or the x-axis, represents age, and the vertical axis, the y-axis, represents height. This graph shows that in the first few years, the height of the tree increased pretty rapidly, and then as the years progressed, the height of the tree increased more slowly. Problem number two from 8th grade unit 4 lesson 13. The solution to a system of equations is 6 and negative 3. Choose two equations that might make up the system. To do this, we can substitute the x value with the 6 and the y value with the negative 3. Let's start with a. y equals negative 3x plus 6. After we substitute these values, it reads negative 3 equals 3 times 6 plus 6. Negative 3 equals 18 plus 6. Negative 3 does not equal 24, so equation a could not make up the system. Let's try equation b. Let's substitute the x with a 6 and substitute the y with a negative 3. Now the equation reads negative 3 equals 12 minus 9. 12 minus 9 equals 3, and negative 3 does not equal 3. So equation b could not make up the system. Equation c. Let's substitute the x with a 6 and substitute the y with a negative 3. Now the equation reads negative 3 equals negative 30 plus 27. And negative 30 plus 27 equals negative 3. Negative 3 does equal negative 3. So C might make up the system. Let's try D. 
Let's substitute the x with a 6 and the y with a negative 3. Now the equation reads negative 3 equals 12 minus 15. Since 12 minus 15 equals negative 3, negative 3 does equal negative 3, so equation D also might make up the system. Even though the instructions said choose two equations that might make up the system, and we've already found two equations that make up the system, let's go ahead and see if equation E also might make up the system or not. Substitute the x value with a 6 and the y value with a negative 3. Now the equation reads negative 3 equals negative 24 plus 27. Negative 24 plus 27 equals positive 3. And since negative 3 does not equal positive 3, equation E does not make up the system. Problem number 3 from 8th grade, Unit 5, Lesson 3. A car is traveling on a small highway and is either going 55 miles per hour or 35 miles per hour, depending upon the speed limits, until it reaches its destination 200 miles away. Letting x represent the amount of time in hours that the car is going 55 miles per hour, and y being the time in hours that the car is going 35 miles per hour, an equation describing the relationship is 55x plus 35y equals 200. A. If the car spends 2.5 hours going 35 miles per hour on the trip, how long does it spend going 55 miles per hour? We can substitute the y with 2.5, since y represents the amount of time that the car was traveling 35 miles per hour. Now the equation reads 55x plus 35 times 2.5 equals 200. 35 times 2.5 equals 87.5. Let's subtract 87.5 from both sides of the equal sign. Now the equation reads 55x equals 112.5. To find the value for x, we need to divide both sides by 55. 55x divided by 55 equals 1x or x, and 112.5 divided by 55 equals 2.045, which is approximately 2.05. So 1x equals 2.05 hours. Since x represents the amount of time driven at 55 miles per hour, then the car travels 55 miles per hour for 2.05 hours. B. If the car spends 3 hours going 55 miles per hour on the trip, how long does it spend going 35 miles per hour? Let's start with the original equation, 55x plus 35y equals 200. Now we're going to substitute the x with a 3 to represent the 3 hours going 55 miles per hour on the trip. 55 times 3 equals 165. So now the equation reads 165 plus 35y equals 200. Subtract 165 from both sides of the equal sign. Now the equation reads... 35y equals 35. Divide both sides by 35. 35y divided by 35 equals 1y or y, and 35 divided by 35 equals 1. y equals 1, which is equal to 1 hour. So if the car spent 3 hours going 55 miles per hour, the car would have spent 1 hour traveling 35 miles per hour. C. If the car spends no time going 35 miles per hour, how long would the trip take? Explain your reasoning. Again, we can start with the original equation, 55x plus 35y equals 200. We can substitute the y with a zero because that means that it traveled zero hours at 35 miles per hour. Now the equation reads 55x equals 200. We can divide both sides of the equal sign by 55. 55x divided by 55 equals 1x or 1. And 200 divided by 55 equals 3.636. Which means if the car was never traveling 35 miles per hour and only traveled 55 miles per hour, it would take 3.64 hours to travel 200 miles. Problem number four. 
The graph represents an object that is shot upwards from a tower and then falls to the ground. The independent variable is time in seconds, and the dependent variable is the object's height above the ground in meters. A. How tall is the tower from which the object was shot? Look at the graph and look at the vertical axis, the y-axis, the height in meters. The height of the tower must be the y-intercept, which is 10 meters. B. When did the object hit the ground? To find when the object hit the ground, look at the x-axis, the horizontal axis, and you can see the point at 6 seconds after it was shot, it had hit the ground. C. Estimate the greatest height the object reached and the time it took to reach that height. Indicate this situation on the graph. To do this, all we have to do is find the highest point on the graph. Next, look to the y-axis just to the left and we can estimate the greatest height. To me, it looks like the greatest height is just about at the 93 meter mark. And then if I look straight down below that along the horizontal x-axis, it looks like it had taken approximately 2.9 seconds to reach its greatest height. Help me disrupt YouTube's algorithm by liking this video, commenting on this video, sharing this video, and subscribing to my channel. Thanks. I appreciate it.